Surprise, 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 surprise. Welcome back, Elizabeth. There were so many people threatening me because they haven't seen you for a while, even though they go to your channel, but they want to see you here with me and enjoy this. Is everything okay between you two? I said, of course it is. We'd rather die with each other. We're in these YouTube streets looking out for each other. Nothing's going to go down like that, but they just love to see you here also. And I'm just overjoyed. And I'm so glad. Listen, I got caught up, had a little situation, took an extra hour. I know your time is precious. Do not play with Elizabeth's time. Thank you for giving me the extra hour to get things together. And I'm so glad to be here with you. And I want you to tell everybody how you've been doing and just segue right into the title because I think this is something that we should talk about. How are you? Of sister? course. So for those of you who are wondering, no, Lance and I agree. We, we talk behind the scenes all the time. For those of you who don't know, I have been, uh, my personal uploads have been more frequent as well as I am a contributor on uh, another channel. And so yes. that does take up my time as well as my personal life as well. But there's no ill uh, intent here with my brother. And right, right. Now I will tell you this, and even if it was, see, I don't lamb blast black men. That ain't what I do. Unless you scam it. <laughs> now, I know you in the street for scamming folks. Mm -hmm. But if you on up and up, like my brother is with me, we, we cool, we cool. So I know it's been a minute. We won't, let, we won't allow so much time to pass for my next visit on the channel. Um, yes. So that's pretty much it. So I've just been, you know, busy living and doing me. Pretty much. That's about it. But we, have to say, we are have groupies. To so just so you folks know. I don't want yes, you to yes. think that, oh, it's, no, it's, there's nothing untoward yeah. happening with That's my brother right. and I. We That's are right. we are well. Now, yeah. just to get right into our topic today, um, just discussing the ineffective legal system as well as the ineffective prison system, which all basically goes together and points right back to the top of the head of the dragon, the U.S. government as it pertains to black people in America. There are, all of that centers around, as you know, Lance, racial biases, which go back to basic times of slavery, permeating all the way through Jim Crow, which we still have Jim Crow. This is a different form of Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. So granted, you're not doing um, all of these lynchings that you saw before, as well as cross burnings in people's yards, um, Jim Crow is still going on. It's still going on. Um, brothers and sisters need to wake up. So I thought this discussion would be great for you and I to have as we discuss Little Lee. And uh, also we can discuss I'm running long out of North Carolina. What many of your viewers who are watching and those of you who would catch the replay I want to make a few points here that are very clear. And based with Lance's personal experience um, working um, with prisons and things, he can chime in um, and give some great insight to this topic. The 13th Amendment still allows for legal slavery if you are mm -hmm. a person that has been prosecuted and convicted under the law. Okay? So if you are prosecuted under the law, okay, you can still be a slave. And if you know before the times that we currently live in, prisons used to make all types of products for consumers like myself. I mean, I was a kid, but um, for those of you who may be older than myself, they made a lot of products that consumers in the U.S. would use. OK, so that was another way to get free labor. The history of this country and free labor is daunting, which is why she is held as the most powerful force in the world. Because of chattel slavery, a.k.a equaling free labor, labor, excuse me, and the cotton industry. The cotton industry basically skyrocketed this country as well as a few over there in Europe into what you see today in terms of her being a powerhouse, okay? 
And yes, the, the, the Cotton Picking Truth is a documentary that came out in 2020 that talked about slavery of a lady, uh, May Miller, I believe it's her name, mm -hmm. who was a slave up until 1961. However, a local, uh, I think a state politician noted that there was still legal slavery up to 2010 in Louisiana and Mississippi, okay? Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind as we go through this discussion today. So when we talk about mean men being disproportionately given the death sentence, uh, execution, this is based on a system of racial biases. Mm -hmm. I did some research of my own when the information came out about Little Lee um, Lance and what it did say was, is that I went back to 2011 and what I found in my own research was that we had 72 black men be exonerated from execution based on a simple DNA test. So, yes, we know, know the system is ineffective. It, it, it does not work. And the reason why it doesn't work, see, some it's, it's twofold. So I'll say it's, it's going to be I don't want to say 50 50, but it's going to be half and half. It, it works in this way, in targeting black people for ridiculous mandatory minimum sentencing. It works in that way, but it is ineffective as it pertains to black men who they uh, convict and prosecute who've done crimes against white people. So let's say that. So, the, so, so people won't necessarily get uh, jaded. So it is effective and ineffective in, in that portion. It is effective in incarcerating mass amounts of black people, yes, so that they can keep legal slavery going on. But it is ineffective as it pertains to black men and women who do crimes against whites. It is ineffective because a lot of these um, crimes that happened long before these advanced technologies for DNA testing and you know and all of that stuff a lot of the folks have been convicted in in the sense that okay well a white woman is dead let only was accused of raping and killing a white woman all right and even though the forensic experts who had taken the stand on the part of the prosecution they really didn't have good forensic evidence. And so because his law Okay, we have an issue here. It looks like we fell off. Let me see if we can get her back on. Okay, she completely fell off. Hopefully we can get her back on. If you saw I was typing something, didn't even realize that um, she started to get blurry. Everything is all right on this end, on that end. I don't know why this would happen, but just bear with us and um, she'll be back. She'll be back. Um, if you can see me, there's a video, since you've gotten cut off, if you have another uh, computer that has this on, just use the link that I gave you, and um, I hope she knows that she, she fell off, so let me send a message to her. 
um, she might not know. We just told her to click the link again. Always something, right? But that's okay. Top of the day, we're gonna get a lot of stuff done today. So, well, why now? When she was speaking something so important for us to know, this is what I don't understand. These things seem to have a mind of their own, perfectly timed. That when if we're on a comedy show talking about you know craziness and we're laughing, we're adults, nothing happens. But as soon as we have someone as brilliant and as knowledgeable and as charismatic and convincing and knows the deal, they you know. What about the thing? You all have been with me here, many of you, for many years. And, okay, here she is. Yes, my dear sister, you fell off. And I was just telling them that <laughs> you're saying something so important that you started to, everything sort of zoom, 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 zoom. But I know that nobody heard that part. But you completely froze it. Yeah, you just cut me. I was talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but they heard you up until the point that you came off. If I see you freezing... You're not frozen to you and you're not frozen to the viewers because it's coming okay. from the cloud. But it freezes to me and I'm sitting here like, oh man, please don't cut off, don't cut off. And at one point I was texting the text and listening. Then you got quiet. I looked up, it was it was just me. So I knew. So I'm gonna expect this. Like I said, I'm topped off, my internet is strong, everything is good, there's the power's on. This should not be happening, but we know with a show of this magnitude, this information, it's gonna happen. Go figure. But yeah, let's continue on, sister. And again, like I said, if okay. something like this happens again, just come back on. Go ahead. So, Little Lee, again, he was um, executed in 2017. And even though, even with the Innocence Project, they were talking about um, requesting them to basically test his DNA with these new tech, with the new technology. Um, they basically were not getting anywhere. And so what happened was in Arkansas, mm -hmm. they only had a set amount of the medicine that they used to execute persons left. And that medicine was set to expire. And so since the global ban on that medicine happened, they set in motion to execute all of these people rapidly. And the first four that they did Little Lee was one of the ones that was in that batch of persons who was not giving a stay with the governor and who was one of the first four. So I, I, I was saying to the people here in the chat is that I didn't want to, I wanted to talk about the swirling and all of that, okay? This is why you would see persons back from the 50s all the way into late 70s telling black men to leave her alone because the minute she cries wolf or if there's people that see actions the brother is not going to make it because the the, the law the laws of justice is stacked against him and even in this brother's right. case you had neighbors white neighbors lying and saying they saw this man they didn't see that man. They didn't see that man, but he was black and this white woman was dead. And so they had to go ahead and get a scapegoat. And so even now, when you look at the issue, now Ronnie Long was released out, out of prison out of North Carolina after 44 years. And again, his crime was against a what? A white woman until they tested this man's DNA. They only gave him Lance seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for forty-four years. Prior to him going to prison, the brother was a mason, like a brick mason. And you know for yourself, they make good money. So he, you know, he did an interview. I have it on my channel as well. He did an interview and he talked about how basically that wasn't enough money because of the skill trade he had that was not enough money to give him after 44 years because he probably would have been at the top of his game when you right. think about his age by the time he just right. determined that he was going to um retire mm -hmm. so fast forward to here we are in 2021 
and all of these rumbling, rumbling excuse me, behind the Little Lee case is making folks take pause to say, hey, we need to do something about this flawed system. The system has been flawed. This is nothing new. Not only have black men been continuously arrested for petty crimes against white women, they have been executed or given long prison sentences because as you know, 21 states uh, ban the death penalty. And so they would basically give you life without the possibility for parole or life with parole, et cetera, et cetera. But I wanted to say something too. When you talk about experts at these trials, think about this. An expert, because a lot of times people say, well, I'm an expert in my field. I'm an expert here. So these lawyers would get these experts to speak on, they, on their behalf to sway the jury toward whatever outcome they're, they're seeking themselves. And so an expert is merely defined as a person who is knowledgeable about or skillful in a particular area, in a particular area. But what happens when those experts, although they claim to be skilled in that particular area, are doing egregious things to go ahead and convict innocent people and these innocent people lose their lives. Now, now Lance, I'm going to let you go ahead and chime in there and then we'll just continue the, the discussion. Well, according to many people who um, experienced the whole Barack Obama uh, election, we're in a post-racial society. Where are they? Why would they say something like that? Well, we know the media would put that out there to try to smooth things over to make it seem like it's not, but until the laws and legislation has changed, it will never be. We're not even looking for it to be that post-racial thing. Just, just let it be about what's fair. But there's no way that we are going to expect fairness from a system that was built on being unfair, built on murder, built on death, built on thievery, built on rape, on all forms. We are only tools. And you know that when you go to one of the big box uh, places like Home Depot or Lowe's or a local hardware store to get a tool, that tool means a lot to you. It's your property. But after the tool has outlived its usefulness, you throw it down. You don't even care if it's dirty or not. You don't care if you loan it out to a neighbor and they take two months to give it back because you have your use out of it. You don't even care if there's damage to it because it served its purpose. And so we know that the black man and woman, we're useless tools now to them. They'll lie to themselves and their dysfunction and allow a few of us to hold positions. But even if we hold positions in media or in government or, or clergy, we're merely puppets to keep the rest of us caught up in the hope that we can have some kind of equality in the system. But if you want to know what the system is all about, like you say, look into the judicial system, and that's where you see and you can gauge the real status of where we stand in this country. That being said, nothing has changed. That being said, we're all a step away from actually being slaved. Once you're detained, you are enslaved. Once you're convicted, you're property of the state, and they can do with you as they wish because you are property. No matter how much of a luxury car you can drive, no matter how much visibility you can have on social media or on their so-called mainstream so-called media or position or status, when it comes down to it, when you strip all that away that they have afforded you to get because you didn't get it because you're brilliant, yet, well, not because you're dumb, we're all brilliant, and most of us are, but they will afford you that. But there's a price for that. So in my own little way, I was never a judge. I was never a lawyer. But as a CO, corrections officer, I got to see from that position the inside and inner workings of how things go, to talk to people and see how the process really, uh, I can't say affected. I can go outside and get affected by a mosquito bite. It will affect me a certain way. 
but this just totally railroaded people's lives en masse. And I haven't really seen any type of fairness as they would still try to give a break or a smack on the wrist um, to one who has a lighter hue. Not even that, to one who has no hue. Because this system was not built for us, it was built for them. And they're going to let you know that. Now, they'll have a few token situations where they'll let one get so-called justice, but they still have to go out into the street as a black man or black woman. Now, I have to say, this is not a sexist statement, but their focus is really on the black man more so because we are more of a threat, because we can procreate with any race and create a black child. Well, they can say the same thing about the black woman, but they take her as booty. And I'm not saying anything lewd, but booty, B-O-O-T-Y, that's the spoils of war. And that's why our women are called booty. When we focus on the backside, that's the spoils of war of a conquered nation. I'm not submitting and saying that I'm conquered, but they see us as conquered. And many of us act in a way as if we are conquered, as though we have to honor this person I don't have to honor anything. That's why I left their system. Even though it's worldwide, I did not want to be that close to the stove. So you cannot expect justice in their system when every step of the way they harass you, from the corrections officers to the food they give you, to the, to the public defenders that they give you if you can't afford it, because it's a game. You see this lawyer, no matter what the color, because they have secret handshake organizations that, that whitewashes that black lawyer because he's working in for the system. And you think that they're working in your best behalf and they're only playing games with you because chances are that same lawyer and that same judge went to law school together, but they travel in the same circles. And even in a social situation, might even discuss your case. Well, what do you think they're gonna do it? I don't know, let's just say, uh, hey, but they go through the theatrics in the courtroom but it's a game that you're not supposed to win. So stop thinking you're gonna have justice in this system. And it's unfortunate when innocent people get caught up in it that didn't do anything at all. That's to show you that it's not about the people who do stuff. For those who do stuff and take a risk, that's on you. You're still my brother and sister, I love you, but you know what you're dealing with. But for those who are innocently, uh, they're innocent and convicted of something they did not do and have decades of their life, 44 years, and give them chunk change, that shows you that in that situation, what your life is worth, don't say that's him, not me, because if it's one of us somewhere else, it's us. You know, it, 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 it definitely should have opened up brothers and sisters' eyes to what, what is really going on. Um, especially when we talk about, you know, Little Lee and how they rushed those executions because they basically were running out of that drug that stops us from breathing by force. And so it, it, it it's sad that this man lost his life. And from the time he was arrested, Lance, you know, till till they executed him, he proclaimed his innocence. He never one faltered. He never one got off his square to say, hey, I am guilty. I'm not taking any plea deals, etc., etc." But remember, this was a rape and murder of a white woman. Mm -hmm. And you folk out there who like to do all this swirling, let me say this. Because see, some of you folk like to hear the truth. But I'm going to give it to you raw and unfiltered. You are free to lay and dilly-dally around with whatever you choose to. Okay. <laughs> But think of this. The first thing you should be you should be thinking about is how are you going to keep your bloodline going by mix? That's the first thing you ought to be in your head. And the second Tell thing should come about should come about because even in 2021, let a black man accost and do or, or do anything untoward towards a white woman, and he is the bad guy. We've seen issues even with the gentleman who was in Central Park. And the woman said, I'm going to call the police on you and tell them that you're messing with me, even though he, she was in the wrong. So it doesn't matter about her being in the wrong. You are going to be the one that suffered. So why even go there? It, and that doesn't make us um, prejudiced. 
That doesn't make us prejudiced. What that makes us is careful and smart. You know, last 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 weekend, I was telling um, a friend of mine, and she is here. She's like my sister. <laughs> She's in the chat, actually. Um, and I was telling her I was out with um, colleagues, okay? My superior, yes, he is a black man. He's an older gentleman, Lance. And we were out. He taken us out, okay? During our evening out, there was a white lady that came in and she was sitting by herself. She ordered some food. You had three waiters. One of the waiters was an African gentleman. I don't know where he was from, okay? So as she finishes off her meal and everything, Lance, what she says to him, um, because her original waiter, I guess it was his shift time to be over, so he left. So it was only two left and it, one was the African gentleman. Well, she beckoned him over, he came, and she was talking to him about the bill. And then at the end, because she was sitting like catty corn to me, I could hear her. She, he was he was a bald head gentleman like yourself, Lance. She says to him, let me touch your bald head. The brother says, no, please don't touch me. Okay? Now, she went to reach and he said, he's doing this. Now, she's still sitting, she's sitting down. She's still sitting in her seat. So he's moving mm -hmm. back so that she doesn't touch his head, right? So he goes to get her check and bring the brings the cart machine and all that stuff back because he wasn't her original waiter, as I said. There were three and the one that had leave early, I guess, because of his shift. Now he was taking care of his customers. Here, here, here's, here's what's interesting. When he comes back with her bill in the cart machine, she takes a card out, she's paying, uh, did all the stuff or whatever. So when the machine prints out, he gives her her receipt copy and everything. She is still, after he told her initially no, she's consistently saying, just please let me touch your head and trying to reach and touch this man's head. Now, she eventually touches the man's head. And so I'm telling my friend here, I, Lance, to be frankly honest with you, if my yes. superior had not been there, I'd have beat her ass. I'm going to be straight up with you. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's so right. See, that's a black man that has told you twice, do not touch his head. And then he's moving back because you keep reaching at him. So I'm like, can I touch your face? To... No, he could he, he he can't do that. This is it, no, 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 no. This is for you to, uh, you would do that. Oh yeah, I, listen. Oh she'd have got she'd have got that she'd have got it one time. <laughs> but I, I I was so angry. I was so Yes. Oh my goodness. I mean, I'm telling you, I had so much fire in me. I wanted ooh, I wanted to jump over that damn seat. You don't know what I wanted to do to this woman. Because the brother and he was and he was very tactful about it. <coughs> so even when you're being nice, saying, yeah. Hey, don't touch me, stay out of my personal space, but because you got some type of fetish going on, I'm supposed to bow in because <coughs> of the country that I'm actually in. And notice he can't, he could not, even if he wanted to raise his voice, let's say in his country he would raise his voice at her. He can't do that here. He can't. So I'm like, okay, I got to be the champion for the cause for the brother. But I'm telling you, if my superior, if, if, he, ooh, we wouldn't even be on this on this uh, screen today. Because they probably <laughs> wouldn't come and arrest me. Because I was going to beat the dog snot out of her here. By picking Maybe. up the table, the anything yes. I could have gotten. Yes. Yes. To break up back. You hear me? That's right. That's right. But this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. So a black man who is not even interested in her, he can't even say, hey, 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 hey. Leave me be without you trying to consistently push the issue of the agenda, whatever it is you're trying to do. So when you think about men who have been imprisoned falsely, executed falsely at the hands of white people this tells you the totality of what it is because if you also think about the 72 black men i said that have been exonerated since um the last the, the statistics cut off at 2011 plants there's more of them there's more of them who could be exonerated but the problem is and, and i'm sure you know this yourself working as a ceo the problem is 
is that judges do not like to say, okay, well, Lance, you can have DNA testing for your crime. As we said in the beginning, free labor slavery under the 13th Amendment. These prisons will lose money. They'll lose money. If people start to really investigate the crimes of the black man as it pertains to white women or even white men, and they were going to, and they use DNA to um, convict these guys and execute these guys, the numbers would be astounding. Just like, you know, um, I was saying to someone when we talked about uh, GMO, if you talk about GMO in America, and in America finally confesses to what GMO has done to people's lives, that means she has to admit that she intentionally poisoned her citizens. They're never going to do that. Never. Or if they do, I'll be dead 500 years, and then she'll come back and say I did. So I say to you, you know, I'm sure in your time as a CEO, you had a lot of guys saying to you, Lance, I'm innocent. I didn't do this. Yes. And sometimes yes. I recognize that those guys, some of those guys could just be saying that because they want to get out. But there is legitimate reasons for some of them, not all, to say, I didn't do this crime. I'm here for somebody, you know, framing me. Didn't you experience yeah. that? Oh, big time, big time. See, the thing is that they have to keep the numbers up of our bodies in prison for that same reason that you said of the free labor. That's all we are, our life force, our energy, our physical might, even our brilliance. And they use this also to target those who are the biggest threats. From even in the public school system, we have teachers and especially up in New York City, back in the late 60s and early 70s, when I went to the public school system, they had those who I would just say are the falashas. Anybody with some sense would know that's what it is. Yes. I'm um, saying that I'm hating somebody who hijacked the land back you. in 1938. No, I got you. I got you. Right, right. Um, they were there as the sentinels, mostly women and some men as the teachers, overwhelmingly in black schools or schools that were dominated by a black population student body and those were the sentinels to look over to see the budding potential of those who are coming up those who are shining bright who can do for their community and also had parents at home or whether it wasn't a parent but someone or those at home to support them to teach them sense to do for their community when they have developed themselves to be something of, of, of a plus. Yes. It was their job to either sway them or chop them down. And if that doesn't get you, because I know many brilliant brothers who are so smart, so full of intelligence and, and skill in different areas of expertise that are now like tagged pigeons because they were framed or put in an environment where they may make a foolish minor mistake or judgment that will follow them for the rest of their lives and color who they are on paper when they go for some employment or they go for a certain type of license or, or loan or we have so many things coming against us and that system of incarceration is definitely one of the biggest uh, uh, potholes of the, of the vehicles that we all can fall into. Okay, so that being said, they have a joke amongst many CEOs in the different facilities that I've worked in that they say, yeah, you know, when you come here, Lance, understand that everybody's going to say they're innocent. Yeah, everybody's innocent. But you know what? A lot of us are. And I would even say so, aside from the pedophiles, the baby rapers, the ones who have murdered for no reason, because sometimes if you're about to be murdered and you kill somebody, that's a good reason to snuff somebody. What are you going to just take me? No. Aside from those, the conditions in our neighborhoods are like they're percolating to cause us to lose sight 
of a vision down the road of what we are to become with the seeds of greatness inside of us to cause us to do something in that moment to fall victim and be snuffed and put away and incarcerated. And then later on, you're thinking to yourself, oh, man, you don't really know what this does to you. I remember, and it still stands true today, that in New York City, which is a small part of New York State and Nassau and Suffolk County and all the counties upstate, a lot of people don't get this. That in that little part, because when we think of New York, we think of the Empire State Building, the former Twin Towers, and, and, and Midtown Manhattan, and Harlem, and Brooklyn, and no, New York State is huge. And it goes all the way up to Canada. Yes. And there's lots of empty space and country and places that don't generate income. Well, out of all of the people, and I forgot whether it's 90 or 95 percent or 85 percent, with the almost 100 prisons that are all upstate, giving jobs to the people who had nothing to do because it was nothing but farmland or selling apples or beautiful country but poor. So when you take these little hick towns in upstate New York and you feed those prisons or those prisons with people who are incarcerated, it generates an income for the whole state and all these white folks that live upstate live good because now you have the prison and you have the hotel next to the prison because when you go up all those hours, you're not gonna drive back. You have the restaurants and then you have the CO who got the job and he lives in that town. And then you have the cook who is his wife who lives in that town. And then you have the grandfather who may do something of a clerical nature, administrative nature. So these prisons are, are, are good business to develop these towns where people that are up there they don't look like us. And they come from five different neighborhoods in New York City. Now, it shifts between the top seven. Sometimes one jumps in the top five and one comes out. But from what I can remember, Harlem is one of them. Um, uh, Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn is another one. Uh, Jamaica, Queens is another one. Maybe certain other parts of Queens and certain other parts of Brooklyn. But it's usually five specific neighborhoods where most of the bodies are arrested and brought up state eventually. Because you don't know, go to Rikers Island, you go to case, you get convicted, and they ship you upstate. So you can be the reason why the economies flourish. Then you have private companies that make the toilet paper and the little drinks that they drink and the food that's brought in. So everybody gets a piece of you because you're locked up. And if you're locked up, like the 44 years that our brother was locked up, and they give you chump change. But while you're locked up, there's no shortage of money. And many of the brothers that are up there are innocent or have been railroaded aside from those who have done what they did. So I don't have those numbers, but a great amount of them are innocent and or lived in a condition that had them so stressed. The police harassment, the lack of jobs, the, the tension between black men that way have them go at each other. You know, just all kind of things in these neighborhoods that produce the conditions. And while you're going through the poverty, you look up on the billboard and see a pretty sexy woman standing next to a luxury car. And you wish you had that, but there's no job. And she's complaining that you're not making any money. You feel less than a man. You get frustrated. You go out there and you do something. After a while, there's no excuse for that, but I can understand why, because I've sat down for years with these brothers, because you know I'm a talking brother, and every time I went to work, I talked to these brothers and got to see. And we are wounded, we are hurt. We're about to play a game in the system that we know we can't win. So sometimes we're gonna take shortcuts, and in taking the shortcut, even when we do something petty, the consequences for it is even larger than somebody living in an affluent neighborhood who got caught with drugs and they take them to a rehab because their family has money or contribute to a, a politician in this campaign. So we'll take care of him. But when you're in the black neighborhood that happens to be a poor black neighborhood with not many options, we got you. Your life is not worth anything. We have to preserve ourselves and we take you away and throw away the key. Come on with it, sister. You know, Lance, it's interesting when you talked uh, as well, too, about the small towns. 
Um, because as I said, when we first started this stream, that up until 2010, Louisiana and Mississippi, they still had slavery in terms of what we know slavery to be in people out in cotton fields. So no, that doesn't surprise me at all. What, what should be appalling and surprising and aggravating to black folks who are still in America, and you all continue to think that voting for these oppressive regimes calling the Democrats and the Republicans, these people are not your friends. And the blacks who are serving, the, as I've said before, the congressional black coons, that's what they are. They number coons because they want to stay in office and they do things against their own people. Now, it's two things you need to watch for. The next vote that comes down for this police bill, I want you to watch how many folks in the Congressional Black Coons going to be voting yay. Okay? Watch that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the second part of that is this. What are you going to do about it? You're going to continue to vote for these folks, but these small towns, because of how they're set up just as you said, they do use family structure nepotism to basically arrest people who are just passing through etc i mean a lot of that generates income for them just as you said so no no one is uh mm. oblivious to that and if there's any private prisons we know that they make money off prisons i said that at the start of this stream why we still have that ask yourself ask yourself why hasn't there been amendments to the 13th amendment or ratify the 13th amendment to remove that clause about prosecution as it pertains to having legal slavery ask yourself that ask yourself because that is by intention that is by intention no, none of these polarized western nations that call themselves superpowers came to be a superpower without slavery understand what i just said none of these western nations that call themselves superpowers got these titles without slavery slash free labor now the tenant is is that america just took it to the nth degree she just made it so egregious and here we are today where a black man can continue to coexist live his life but the minute someone says he has done something untoward to a white woman it's his time is up it's lights out and they will use all kinds of tactics to lie and get the brother to become guilty and there was a case with the brother i want to i think he was in um he might have been in virginia young brother that recently he was at a western union wiring some money to his girlfriend lance there was an incident at a hotel in a like two towns over they used facial recognition on this brother and said, hold up. No, that's him. So now this brother, even though he had a receipt from Western Union, the Western Union, when he was sending the money, that facility had a camera to show him in the facility, to show him in the facility. They said it was still him because it was facial recognition. Now the numbers on that are astonishing when it comes to them using that technology to find criminals. Let, let me say this as well. In the UAE, they use a lot of AI technology, okay? Mm -hmm. Remember, I, even the last time I spoke on your channel, I've always said to you, Lance, that industrialization, technology is a benefit and a curse. 
there's good things you can garner from from these uh, 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 new developments as well as ills of those as well. That's right. And so here they don't use facial facial recognition in terms of that software, but what they do use is these AI cameras. And because your picture is all over your visa here, your um, what they call an ID card here, all they do is match the picture up. Whereas mm -hmm. not per se using these these um, retinal scans and all this stuff of previous criminals. They don't use that aspect of it. But I, I, I said it to say this. As we usher in what's happening right now, even with the, the cost of fuel that's happening in the state, what you're going to find is that as numbers in these prisons begin to be on the decline, they're going to have to come up with new ways to incarcerate us. I.e., you got an Asian hate crime bill. And you black folks voted for that. That's y'all doing. Mm -hmm. Anybody vote, mm -hmm. you did that. I'm, I'm blaming you for it. I blame everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got that going on. Then you got this mess with the FDA that's getting ready to ban flavored and menthol cigarettes when the research shows that black folks are the ones that smoking that. So now we have ushered in a 2021 version of prohibition against black people. That's the new crime bill. But y'all voted for that. You folk voted for that. And look what you got. Five from 10 is always gonna get you five. It, it's never gonna change. <laughs> it is never going to change. But, so, but you know, I never thought I'm about saying, that. Go yeah. ahead. Go, say again, no, man. Yeah, no, 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 keep going. But I just never thought about that, the prohibition and us with the menthol cigarettes and we're going to act crazy not yeah. getting them. And yeah, we're going to get them or we're going to get caught with it. They, I'm telling you, they get ready to usher that in. And pick, yes, because they're going to be binding, as you know, Lance, on the black market. These are new ways to incarcerate you folks. You are sitting around here and, and, and let's be very clear, because I said this before in a previous stream of mine. Let's be very clear about this. I'm not quite 50, but my parents were complicit in voting for some of these people who have still been in Congress, etc. And some of you folk who are my age, your parents were complicit if they were voting for these folks. Because as blacks in America, our parents are always telling us, expect with well, the Democrats this that no, because you just because you have more blacks in the Democratic uh, House of Representatives, that doesn't mean they for you. I just told you that those coons ain't doing nothing for you. They don't speak up. All they want to do is have a study about reparations. When we know all you have to do is go get these records. You don't need no study. That's a waste of time and money. To get you off your square. So now they allow these other politicians who do not look like them usher in new crime bills that is going to affect you. But you folk out here playing. These brothers are losing their lives. Imagine spending 44 years in prison for a crime you didn't commit. Imagine spending all of your what monies you have in your 401k to exonerate yourself because of a flawed facial recognition system. But you black. Imagine your family depleting whatever monies they have, if they got any, to try to get you off death row. Because somebody said you raped and killed a white woman. That's not going anywhere. They have to, again, as I just said, they have to keep the status quo to be a great nation. And the only way they can legally put in slavery is if you're prosecuted and convicted. They have to convict you. So when they come out with this ban, don't say I didn't tell you. You've been told, you've been warned. You know what's amazing as well, Lance, is that when you think about some of the elders who have gone on to glory in the great beyond and they have come to us at different times 
and they have told us about the treachery of the white man. Now, you know, I love Malcolm X. I don't care if I was born after him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you think about his teachings and some of the things that he would say, the man was clairvoyant. I mean, yes, he, sure was. He, was ahead, he was ahead of his time. Got of it. course. Yeah. But everything that he said prior to his leaving planet Earth, the stuff is it's like it is like a textbook note taking section when you just turn the page and it's just happening, happening, happening. And the and, and the real issue is again, I go back to our parents who were parents or young adults during those times of let's say Malcolm X, Mega Evans. They were not heeding a lot of his words because he was down with the nation of Islam. Sometimes we have to put aside yes. personal differences that we had based on how someone uh, practices religion to get the real message. Because even though he was in the nation of Islam, the brother was dropping mad game. Yes. Truthful game. Real game that in 2021 it's all come to fruition it's still the same everything he's ever said it is still the same so as these new crime these crime bills are not going to be called like the 94 crime bill. it's not going to be called it it's going to be called it's going to be called other names to trick you see that's the trick bag that's the trick bag they're going to call it other names to get you off your square. But in actuality, that's exactly what it is. How is it that you've had all of these uh, black media outlets lying for years saying that the folks that we elect in Washington, D.C. cannot make a bill specifically for black folks, but yet the Senate only had one dissenter of an Asian crime bill. And nobody is talking about that in mass numbers as they were before, saying that they could not have a bill specifically for us. Hmm. I.e. a Roland Martin. See, because some of you folks still listen to him, but he ain't nothing but a coon. He trying to get his biscuits. So when we talk about the injustices and the system that was created against black people in America, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. It's gotten and so worse. Since nothing has changed. You're going to keep getting what you got. Not a damn thing. Even with Lance in his experience, as he said, you know, you had a lot of guys telling and saying that they're innocent. And you know, Lance, no one can say what the true numbers of innocence is, because as you know, and you're a parent, it's hard to, to, to weed out the ones who are being honest and the ones who are lying because they want, to, they're, they want their freedom to get out of those four walls, out of the confinement of those walls. Yes. And so yes. you can't really gauge what the innocent numbers are. And so even when you talked about, I remember when Angela Davis was talking about the, the, the prison industrial complex and that entire system. But see, we perpetuated that by voting for these folks. We did. Our parents did us a disservice by encouraging the debauchery. So I say this to you, all of you folk who are going to catch this now and those of you who are going to catch the replay, don't make the same mistakes with your children. Don't have your children out here voting blindly for identity politics. Don't. Because we haven't solved anything. The only, the, the optics that we have moved in terms of techno technology has allowed us to move where it looks like we are doing better as black people. And no, we're not. 
because racism in the workplace, in schools, in medicine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, continues. So even though, you know, like we see one-offs here and there with, 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 with cop killings of, of, of unarmed black men, that's only a small piece. When you think about the racist agenda in these workplaces, in medicine, look how many black women are dying, are dying giving childbirth, during childbirth. So many black women are dying during childbirth and nobody is listening to them when they're talking about being in a state of discomfort. Something's hurting me here. It doesn't feel right here and blah, 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 blah. So no, it, it the, the system is not and has never been made for us. But I charge you folk who are listening, if you are parents and you saying that you are not going to leave Babylon, you stand in Babylon, do better. Because you all at fault. I just told you mine was at fault. See, I don't have a problem with saying that. I'm speaking my truth. Don't put the same mess in your children that you know is wrong Sorry. to make yourself look better as a parent. No. Because all this voting ain't it. All this marching ain't it. All this all of that it hadn't solved the thing you had montgomery bus boycott and yes although it may have crippled the bus system financially and blacks were able to sit at the mix in all over the bus we're still at the back of the bus we are still at the back of the bus although it may not be pictorially what you see we are still at the back of the bus how can people who have been here since chattel slavery still not have rights and they have to keep renewing the Voting Rights Act. See, that should tell you something. That should tell you something. That's right. That's right. So when we talk about these black men who are going to experience the inevitable of losing their lives due to Folks lying on them saying, I saw them here and I saw them there. Because these people who are their victims are white. It's going to be many more little leads. But this is nothing new. They, These people have been doing this. And it's just like, you know why I'm, I don't do a lot of talking about police shootings, um, Lance? It is because, and you're a little bit older than me, but you know for yourself being in New York City growing up, in the late 60s, moving all the way into the 80s, black men across America were going into police stations trying to file complaints against abusive police officers. People were not believing them. So this ain't not new. This ain't nothing new. But, but, They're but, just but going. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, I don't want to cut you, but I have to say something on this too because. I know many retired police officers that I've grown up with, many, some closer, some real close, some in a distance where we have communication. And their careers behind the scenes, all through the years, they would tell me how the system within that police force or that precinct in New York City, and I'll say New York City, was extremely racist how they would punish certain officers for not going along with how a certain report was going to be written because in law enforcement you better get along with that see when you make a report people don't understand this when you make a report whether it's behind the walls of a, of a jail a prison or even in a police precinct or what you would say across the country, the sheriff department. When there's an incident, when there's several officers present, they don't all just have their own story. When they write that report, that sergeant or, or higher up or supervisor, corporal, whatever you may call it in that particular agency must be there. And before ink hits the paper, and this is something I know, right? Excuse me. Whew. Before ink hits the paper, 
they sit down and they agree on what the reality is going to be. And when they're cross-examined, potentially, if they're called forward, they know that they will be on the same page because they wrote their own report and the sergeant or hire has to make his report and it has to fit. Because if one part doesn't fit, it can all come tumbling down and they won't keep the truth hidden. Because say, for example, it's as detailed as, say you have what they call an inmate, and I hate to use that word, but that's what they call it. Our family, our brothers, or sisters, when you're in there, you're, you're an inmate and you're a number. It's not your son or your brother or your father, you're just property, you're a number. Inmate so-and-so, they may put the name. He was prone, and laying on his back, and I came in through the door, and he was approximately 12 feet from the right-hand wall, and as I stepped to the side, he kicked me between the legs, and when I fell, I grabbed him in his arm, and my elbow, by mistake, jammed his Adam's apple. By mistake, it just happened to jam his Adam's apple. Mm. See? You have a big guy. They practice this. Well, we have a camera there, but we couldn't tell because the six foot six officer came in as backup. But because of the confusion that was going on, he just happened to stand at an angle. See, they know what they're doing. Just like when they get in the huddle and, and discuss a, a play in the game of football, they know exactly what they're going to do. And this is practice. You can't whip the pen and the paper when it comes time to deal in court. A court where the people in charge have more power than you because that's their game, that's their home base, and they're going to railroad you. Look, and I agree with you when you said that there's no way of really telling, but I'll go a little further than this. When you're in with many of these young men and women, no matter what the chronological age is, you're not just there behind the glass, if it's fiberglass, behind the bars, whether they're there. Most SEALs did that. What kept me alive in my spirit was to go in, do my job, and I would go into the day rooms with those that they called inmates. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 of them. All could have been um, some convicted for some murders, whatever. They're there. I got my hands. They got their hands. I'm outnumbered, but I never had an incident. Because when I was there, many said, well, you can't go in there every day and fraternize with them. Ah. I'm doing my job. And if here is for corrections, you must counsel with them. You must help to relieve them of the stress as human beings. Relate to them. You'll have a better situation. I've had situations where stuff jumped off. Nobody came at me. And I did my job. If someone went against what was supposed to be done and is showing me disrespect personally, because it's not about the badge or the uniform that I have, and I said, listen, I'm going to respect you as a man. We know that you're here. We know the hierarchy, but don't look at me that way. I'm here as a job, and I'm not here to oppress you. You know the reasons why you're here, whether it's a mistake or you were railroaded or you were about that life and you did what you did. We'll figure that out. But look at me as a man, and I'm going to look at you as a man, regardless. You're my brother. I'm not here to judge you, because judging is when you don't know and you're making an approximation. I'm not here to assess you for anything you may have done. Because me, this outfit that I have on, can quickly turn into a jumpsuit that you're wearing if they decide that they don't dig me too tough. So I'm not coming here to talk to you as you see me in uniform. I'm not coming here to be condescending to you. I'm not coming here to make you feel bad that if you didn't complete as many grades in school as I did, or I'm here getting a paycheck. Because today, that could be part of my last paycheck. We're meeting here this way. I'm going to make it where it's going to be the nicest hours that you have, and you're going to do the same for me, and we're going to relate as men. Because the same pressures that you feel in the outside world and in here are the same pressures that I feel. I'm no different than you, brother. 
I just got away from having to walk on certain hot, red hot coals. But I know the deal. That being said, many people don't understand. It's like, I know I can go home when I put my hours in there, right? But in a way, you can't. You're there in your waking hours, and I would do a lot of overtime, 16 hours a day. I would just go home to sleep and come back. I was doing a little bouncing in some of the local clubs. It would call some of the seals here because we knew some of the guys that were going to act up in the club. And that, that de-escalated things. Needless to say that I've spent a lot of time with some of these young men. And I'm here in the motherland and still keeping contact with many who I met in a jail or a prison because we have that kind of bond. Whether they were the victim of recidivism and went back or whether they came out and never went back. It's bigger than that. And we who are in position have to see beyond that. Oh, you little inmate. Oh, you're no good. I've seen some of my own brothers who are also correction officers come with their nose in the air because they're making a little money so they're going to throw off. Those I will not deal with. I don't care if we have the same uniform one. I'm going to respect you as much as you respect me. But I can't respect you when I see how you're doing or dealing with someone who's in a position whether they deserve to be there or not. That's not my job to be there to do that. Right? So it all depends on how you deal. But when you're with somebody, 16 hours a day, 16 hours a day, I would be in there more than I was when I was with my ex-wife. And I know them, and I hear them in the middle of the night. I hear the sincere tears that they're trying to hide from other people. Even the ones who may have done things that landed them there. Big, tough, strong guys that you would not want to find walking down the same alleyway at night by appearance. But they're teddy bears. They have kids. They have daughters. They have sons. They had dreams of a life, but they didn't realize it in the heat of the moment. And when you see these and hear these tears, and when you see a brother that he's crying so hard that me as a man, no homo, but it hurt my heart. And this is another thing. We as black men have got to show our brothers who are going through the same things more love. Love. Not no homo business. Brother, come here, man. Let me give you a hug. I feel you, man. Let me sit down and explain to you that I understand how you feel. I would open up the cells and sit down in the bunk with them. And we would talk for hours. Other seals, you all right, man, man? Why are you spending so much time in there, man? The hell with him. He, that, nigga, that nigga did what he did. He deserved it. I don't do this to go baby rapists, no. But it might have been a young brother who needed that time from me as an older man to sit down and show him because he didn't know and have somebody to teach him how it goes. That's half of it. Because when we're young men, we don't want to be men. But what is it that we are told men are? Do we have a lot of women? Do we have a big roll of money doing something that, that their laws say are illegal because they do illegal things to us to get money? They did all this illegal stuff for centuries to put themselves in a position and still can't get a loan from the crooks that stole from us, our life for us? So I'm not going to come down on you for that because nobody gave you the blueprint. How the hell are you going to maintain a vehicle that you just bought and it didn't come with an owner's manual? So these brothers are feeling around in the dark and they have aggression as they should have aggression. But they didn't have the police athletic league. They didn't have a, a martial arts training. They didn't have, their thing was the corner and, and the basketball and then why they did that, they didn't have any money. But the brother comes up and says, hey man, get rid of these man and you get some money. So I'm not going to demonize unless you say you're about that life and you got sense and you refused something better when you had the option. But we need more people to talk. But those who are in social media or in media, they're zipped. They can't talk. They want hits. They want pop popularity. They don't want to get shadow banned off of YouTube. I know when I kept getting them bands, I knew I was doing something right. No, I can't. Because if I'm banned and somebody talking, they will stop me that way. I'm like a roach. I'll keep coming back. You smash him, you think you got it. Look at him, he's dead. Look at when you look down, he's gone. He dragged himself away. He's going to recuperate and come back. That's what they don't like about us. There's more to us than they understand. And this is why they try so hard 
to keep us in that downtrodden position. But we are slick. We're the biggest, the baddest, and the smartest. I wish more of our brothers had influences on them to make them understand how powerful we are. I'll shut up because I'm going off on the rant. I'll rant later well, on tonight. But, Talk but, to but me. Lynn, part of that comes from one's own convictions. Uh, for ex Like I say, I practice principles of my art. And, and, and one of the tenets of my art is justice. So when it comes to cops, th since they have this cold, this, this, this blue wall of silence and all this mess, a lot of them will not call to the carpet their said officers when they are in the wrong. Just like you were talking about the paperwork. Same thing. If you, if you re recall recently, the black woman in upstate New York who had been suing about her pension, excuse me, she finally won her case after all these years so she can get her pension. She basically got kicked out of her career field because she stopped a white officer from basically beating up on a black man who was handcuffed. And what they didn't tell people was is that that same officer who she was stopping from beating the black guy who was in handcuffs, he assaulted her. So imagine. So imagine now. The white officer is in the wrong. The sister checks him about what he was doing. And then he goes and starts striking on her. But nothing happens to him for that mess. So there has to come a time when... You have to stand up for your own convictions at all costs. See, we have gotten so afraid to perish. We are mortified of that. And nobody knows. I could, while we're having this live right now, I could perish right now, Lance. I don't know when my number's being called. But at the same time, I need to have my own convictions about injustices that I see as it pertains to people that look like me. This is the problem with these officers, especially the black ones. They they know what's going on. They, they've they seen yes. it. Yes. Yes. But then they feel cornered because the white officers say, well, hey, hey, I need you to back me up. I need you to back me up. And then if you don't, you become a pariah. Like, I don't know if you ever watched, I used to watch that show, Chicago PD. When I, ever since I was a kid and I found out about Serpico, it made me like like cop shows, right? So when that show was on TV, Chicago, I don't know if it's still on now, but there was a black officer on that show. He found himself in a situation like that where he went against the blue. And they were stalking this guy. He was taking care of his younger brother. They caught him coming home one night to beat the dog crap out of him. And the, and the guy who was a senior uh, officer in the um, police union, he said, it's not, gonna, it's not going to get any better. It's going to come harder and harder until you retract your statement against the officer who was in the wrong. And he said he wasn't doing it. So what he, he basically did was he plotted on the dude, got the dude in his house one night where he didn't have anybody around him. And they basically came to an impasse. But I say that to say he got to a point with his own personal convictions to say, I'm not going to allow this to keep going on. And so the same has to happen for other for, for, for black officers like the black lady. The same has to happen. You can't. Why would one have more loyalty to their job? than their own person. Tell me if that even makes sense to you, Lance. You got more loyalty <laughs> to your job than you do to the people at your house. That's crazy to me. Well, well, you gotta understand, and, and I will say the men doing that. There are a lot of women who do that now, but yes, since, the numbers, yeah, since the numbers are a certain way, and, and I will say in corrections, in many of the uh, agencies, there are slightly more women there than men as officers. Um, but a lot of these men who you see in the supermarket after they get off of their shift and you see the corrections uniform 
And I'll say that more so because we're used to seeing police officers more, but there's a certain um, shock when you see a corrections officer in a normal situation. He might be at the gas station, he might be at the supermarket, wherever. But when you see them and you're not used to that environment and we see what we see on HBO and Cinemax and Showtime, in the movies and on the videos of lockdown and they edit these videos to always have action because you're not going to sit there through 95 percent of the video where 95 percent is just routine stuff going on it is not like that where you go and there's a stabbing and then there's a this fight over here and you're trying to steal it's like, no it can get that way but most of the time, like I said, I just have to tell people a lawyer may come in and you have to escort the inmate and, and, and shackle them down in a safe area so they can talk about their case. The nurse comes around for her meds and you have to document this. You have to take them out to the yard and have them get their sunlight or their hour in the sun and document this. Routine stuff. You're usually cracking jokes with the guys who are there because they're not walking around like the crime yeah. they say they did. They're laughing, they're sad, they're up. Yo, Lance, man, scared, man. When you did bodybuilding, man, how did you do? Oh, this is how you do this. So -so. Oh, yeah, thanks, man, so-and-so. Yo, tell me this, or whatever. That's what it is. So my thing is, when you see them, you know that they're in there with the murderers. You know they're in there with the rapists. And you see them more as supermen than you do the actual police officers who have backup and a gun. You have no gun when you work corrections. Now, you see some big, fat, sloppy correction officers who gave up on keeping themselves up because they're about to retire. Some go in there just to eat all day. They're walking in there with all this food, fast food for breakfast, and they're talking about what they're going to eat for lunch. And then when they eat lunch, where are we going for dinner? You see what I mean? So you have all of these mentalities, but nobody's there to really connect with the people who are there and make it an easier job for them. And these men, most of them, many of them, not all because I know some really good family men that work these jobs, but I will say you have some rotten ones, you have a few good ones, and you have some who are neutral who will be affected by the environment that they're in because they're not fully developed as men. When I first started that job, I was 38 years old, two years from being 40. I was a man for a long time, not even just because I'm a male and I have an organ down there that says I'm a male. That's a big difference from being a man. And that's a big difference from being a full-fledged man with, with exemplary wisdom. But I have more wisdom now than I did back then. Many men don't have control over their household, so they're going to execute control in that jail and in that prison to make up for what they don't do or don't have at home because they're too immature. They want to control there. There's fussing and fighting. Many men gravitate toward the job because they get a sense of power because they feel powerless because of the most foolish reasons. They might feel powerless because they can't satisfy their wives as they should and they feel like they've been shortchanged as opposed to those brothers that they see in the jail in the prison when they're taking the showers and they're mad at what they see if you know what i mean and so those are the ones that they're going to get you can say something without saying it right well i, I i'll say ahead, this Susan. because I, I i'm 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 here and i'm looking at some of the comments and i see so even if people on their jobs are being polarized by fear I guess my own personal conviction is this. As I said earlier, none of us know when our number is going to be called. No, no, none of us. You know, I've never really just been a fearful person based on the premise of whatever will be, would be, will be. You can't just continue to live your life in such fear that you negate all logic, but that seems to be what's going on. Um, even the times that I have been on jobs, Lance, and I have been a rogue because I am convicted about 
what I believe in. You know, <laughs> I was telling the same friend. I said, I, I would come and they would say, <laughs> my dad would say, you on your way to being fired. I'm just wondering when they're going to tell you that you, <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> because I would be doing things that was against the grain. Now, I'm not saying, I'm true to that. That's who I am as a person. So I say that to say people. So I'll give you I, an example would be this. You know how a person say, oh, I'm mortified of rats. I'm mortified of snakes. I'm mortified of this. I'm mortified of that. Okay, I get that. But how are you that fearful at work? I, 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 I guess, and maybe, and maybe it is not for me to understand. All I'm saying is, because you have to look back at yourself. And when you think, as I say about the principles of Maya, they don't use the terminology karma. That is a, uh, a, a Buddhist tenet, I believe it is. It's Buddhist or Hindu. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But what it does talk about is how whatever you put out in this life, if you did all bad, then that's what you're going to get. So when you watch people continuously sign false police reports, uh, against people that look like you. You don't speak up because you're afraid that you're going to lose your pension and all of this. First of all, those are things that at some point you could probably get back. See, we look at the optics a bit different at times as well. And I say that if a person is working in law enforcement, just as you were talking about signing off on these reports and, you know, the coercion that goes along with the team and one person being a dissenter and, 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 and all of that. You have to, I, I feel like you have to come to grips with the reality which, within yourself. And maybe I'm asking too much of a person to do that. I don't think I am, but I think that that should be a no brainer. You know, if somebody is repeatedly doing an injustice in your police precinct and you know that they don't like black people why are you co-signing these false reports and then the fbi did their own study saying that all these police officers are in these gangs or in these white supremacist groups so why are we know this and so maybe it's fearful or loyalty but you still back in the blue. You're supposed to be back in the black. I'm confused, well, Lance. Mm -hmm. No, I, I'll tell you, because like I said, when I worked in Central Florida, in that particular jail, it was um, infested with, with Klan members. See? That See? I was working on posts with them. And the ones who were born and raised in that particular part of the world or in that southern area, they accepted it as normalcy and just basically say, well, we know they're there and we don't bother them and they don't bother us. But guess what? They're getting ready to light you up if something jumps off. Yes. And you but accept. They, how, can, yes. How, how can those guys effectively police with all of these biases? Real well, see, how can see, you see. effectively police if you have biases? That you no. know are egregious and you would use to imprison people. Or play right. No, 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 no. And I know that. I've been in certain areas when stuff jumped off. And they told me, we are removing you from this area and from this investigation and from all of this. You don't exist. You don't exist. Before anything happened that I saw as it was about to jump off. And I knew why. Because they were going to do something wrong. And most go along to get along because of that money and that pension. Yes, I was fired for feeding inmates extra trays that were about to get thrown out. Two extra trays. Two. I got fired. Right? Was it really that? No. They saw my reach on my website. I was told this by some of them who weren't down with that stuff. They are all, and they were some of them that came and fed me information. They didn't like the stuff on my website that I wrote back in those years. 
They didn't like the way I dealt with those they call inmates back in those years. So they had to come at me. The FBI just left there and was focusing on the area that I did lots of overtime in. I was okay. doing overtime there five days out of the week. That wasn't my regular area, but from 6.30 to about 2.30 around that time, when my regular shift started, and I worked from 2.30 all the way down to 10.45, 10, uh, 10 I was there all day. I went home to sleep, and sometimes I go to the club and bounce. But the FBI was there to watch many of the officers who were there who that particular area was a cushy, sweet, nice area. They loved giving me the overtime because I'm a comedian and I would have them all laughing. I made their day go by and I'm drawing pic funny pictures and we're just hanging out. It was a hangout for me. But there were certain officers there, one in particular who had a wife who was a sergeant in the sheriff's department. This is all public knowledge. And he got into the position of working in the rec crew, recreation crew. What is that? Well, you go around to the different parts of the jail at different times. You take this section out to the yard for whatever time, 30 minutes or an hour, whatever. You go and you bring them back in and you take and you have different parts of the crew. It's not just one. It might be two or three officers here, two or three officers there, about a dozen, maybe 20 officers in that area. So you're handling the whole jail on different yards. Well, that's the perfect opportunity to yes. bring something in. And you're assigned a certain area and you go to bring them out to the rec yard and while you're cuffing them or uncuffing them, you're dropping something in their pocket and they're making a call to their boys out in the street, pay him so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so. and it was good money to them because it might be a little bag of, a couple of bags of weed, but you're getting hundreds of dollars for it. Or it may not be money. It might be some nerdy white man who never had a chance to sample the beauty and the beautiful derriere of a black woman and it might be a pimp in there so he gets unlimited um acts performed on him and unlimited usage of this guy's harem all kind of things it might be where that ceo had a drug habit so he'd bring in some and he'd get some it's all kind of reasons but it made big news there because this white man was the ringleader of it and he had maybe just a year or two, well, I think he was already past the retirement a, a, a time, but he was doing extra work, really because his wife was still working. She was a sergeant in the sheriff department, big position. And so he got busted with this. And I was working side by side with him and never knew. And there were others who worked along with him. And the FBI was in there. So if I was doing something wrong, and they trying to insinuate after they got out, I was there. They had to surveil me all up in my backside. That means I'm clean, and the other officers were not, not caught up in anything because if they go in for an investigation, looking for one thing, and they see something else, the FBI gonna get all of it out. Or we went in to see this. We see this going on too. We gonna get you. That means I'm squeaky clean. But right after, within the next few days. They started an investigation internally in the facility on me because I was told the higher ups did not like how I was so influential with the so called inmates and didn't like the stuff I was talking on a real level. And I was even, I'm not going to say more vicious because I'm more just as vicious now, but I got more finesse now. You see what I mean? Yeah. I was just straight saying it and they didn't like it. I didn't give a damn. And see, they embraced me so much that. They were going to have me host a television show that explains what happens in community corrections. And I had to earn that. I had to outright, out talk, out present myself in front of a panel, memorize stuff, and I beat out almost a thousand civilian workers and off offices in that county to get that position, but I never got that. They were asking me before the investigation dropped to be part of the CERT team. They were asking me to be a part of this. Um, there was some other thing that they had there where you basically were a snitch. And I said, I'm not doing it. And they kept asking, I'm like, I'm not doing it. Not because I live in the same neighborhood around the corner from the jail where most of, most of the folks in the end jail come from. They used to think I was crazy. Well, I would change my uniform. 
Be like, if I walked through the streets and if my truck was messed up, I would get up 4.35 in the morning if I had to go over time and walk down 33rd Street up Rio Grande in Texas. Ask anybody about Rio Grande in Texas Avenue. And I went out there in my uniform. Man, they can come out and shoot you. I had a reputation and I knew it was real. I didn't have to worry about it. Matter of fact, some of the guys that may have been locked up might have saw me and say, hey man, what's up, Scarf? You walking? I ain't wearing dirty, now let me chop you off over there. And I get rides. I'd see some of the white officers just look out the corner of their eye and keep on going, the Klansmen. See? But I worked with many of them, and I had frank talks with them. I'm like, look, I'm from a different place. I'm not, well, not like those who are from down here. I'm like, let me ask you something. You see? And they, they gave me answers. And they respected me if you could say that, because they didn't really respect me. But from their point of view, they gave me a more of a of an elevation over those who they knew were weak. Yes. Say, yeah, Lance, uh, if uh, something jumped off, you know, I, I got to respect you. You're on the other side, but <laughs> you're a heck of a guy. You tell it like it is. We, and, and they told me things. I know names of people there. I know the whole deal. And these other ones who are scared of them would turn on me faster. For the, for the bubbles and the trinkets and the rubies and the crumbs that fall off the master's table. But I stood alone. And they put me in an investigation and had all kind of things brought up when I was there at the final situation. Are you a member well, that, of the Black that, Panthers? That was the Are you your name so that you could not, if you went elsewhere, you couldn't seek additional employment. That's what that was about. Right, right. right. But see, they didn't know okay. ultimately that that elsewhere would not even be in the country. Go ahead. Talk. See, that's <laughs> part of the racism that falls under HR. See how that works? Mm -hmm. Remember, I said you had outside of the police shootings, you got your HR, your medical, and your schools. See, that falls under HR. That falls under HR. Systemic racism in human resources. Exactly. Exactly. See, and, and and you and you know what else is. Even when you say, uh, I'm going to go back to the fear factor again. Um, mm -hmm. Just a person being fearful. You know, those of us that live in the West, particularly, particularly the U.S., if you find yourself where you cannot pay for organic fruits and vegetables or organic meats daily, you find yourself buying GMO fruits and vegetables because it's more cost effective for you and you must have sustenance. So I recognize people are fearful of things. I am fully abreast of that. But at some point, see, you can allow your fear to polarize you and then something happens to you. Or your family. That's right. And then that same fear that, that you had when you wouldn't speak up for X, Y, and Z, you would be wanting someone to speak up as it pertains to your family. See, we don't see how that comes back full 300. Life runs in 360 degrees. So when it comes back around and then something hits you, let's say, close to home, you would be wanting someone to speak up for you. So, uh, 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 again, I don't want people to let fear just consume their daily being. Yes. Because one, you don't know when your number is going to be called. So I don't know who coined the phrase, and maybe you can tell me, Brother Lance. Basically, you can live for nothing or die for something. That's right. That's right. So when you see all of the egregious, you know, it, 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 it astounds me, even with this case, like I say, with Little Lee, all of the people that are involved in death penalty cases, as you know, when a person goes for the death penalty, they have to bring in more persons to work that case as they claim they're trying to make sure it's solid and airtight. And the person is not being railroaded, but these people are are being railroaded and they're being executed falsely, mm -hmm. wrongly, mm -hmm. erroneously. And so even when you bring in all of these people, 
to assist on these cases and they see small errors like even with these forensic experts all of the forensic experts the stories were jacked up nobody said anything are you telling me that there was nobody outside of the defendant let Lee, who was black i refuse to believe that because death penalty cases as i said they got serious people that work these cases i mean we're talking about 50 to 75 people so when that goes on are you saying that nobody black saw the errors of this and said anything you know i'd like to know and that's something that we likely would never know that if somebody went and said hey uh lance the forensic folks are not sure about this dude's hair because they based it off a of visual hair inspection a visual hair inspection give me a damn break so it, it, it just it, it, it makes you wonder but in terms of solutions because people always say to me as well and they, they'll say well you all have these conversations but you never mm -hmm. offer solutions I listen I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and give my solutions Lance can concur or not now when I say these solutions I don't care if you agree with me or not I really don't I don't but you cannot say you were not given some solutions slash options because you do have some now i'm going to start with this first practice know your power so the first solution is your right to vote people say well i mean you have to vote democrat or republican no you don't go in there and write somebody name in there go write your cousin Kenneth Wayne name in that and screw them all. See what you will find is while they sit down here trying to go on in your vote using identity politics and these celebrities, as Malcolm X has told you back in the 60s, these people <laughs> are not serious. They're not serious. So why are they using you to get your vote? Because you like identity politics. So stop it. That's your first solution. The second one is. Continue with the first if you are not going to leave Babylon for, let's say, greener pastures. I am not telling, as I have long said, the, the, the move to Mama al Kebulon is not for everybody. It's not. Because the black diaspora in the West are some of the most, you know, I talk about parents, but, but you folks are jacked up. I'm going to be nice on Lance's channel. Don't be nice. You Don't be nice. Up. Let her hang out. <laughs> you folks are jacked up. You folks are real jacked up. What you don't want to do with prior to making your uh, final resting place, you want to bring all of this baggage and egregious crap that you have in your personal life onto the continent. And the continental Africans don't need your mess. They don't need your mess. Leave your mess where you got it from. And if you're not willing to leave your mess, then keep your goddamn ass at home. I mean, it's as simple as that. Stay at home from whence you coming. So that's your second solution. Is to get off the rock. The rock meaning Babylon, a.k.a. the prison of America. Now, I don't give you two. I gave you two options. <laughs> now, in conjunction with number one, if you're not going to leave the rock, what you need to be doing is supporting black owned businesses. There is power in your money. There's power in your money. But you folks, listen, I, as I listen, I have said this before. And I said, wherever I go and have a listening ear, okay? We want acceptance so bad from folks that do not look like us that we do not support our own at our own peril. That's how we live, Lance. And we have got to stop that. So you folks don't want to leave the rock, aka the prison, aka your abuser, because she's an abuser. Preach. She is a domestic abuser. But y'all love it. Okay, I get it. This ain't for everybody. So your next solution, as I just said, 
support these black owned businesses then. You should have five in rotation. Mm. Because you know why? 90% of your money is already going to people who don't look like you, but you can't support your own. So that's called self hate. That is called self hate. And you focus say, well, no, it's not. I love myself. No, you don't, because your actions speak counter to what you're saying. You can say all day that you love yourself. But if your actions show different, I can't take you to be serious. That's right. I just can't. Now here, now here's the next one. The last and final one. Alcabulon may not be for you. See, a lot of people have an issue with what we call developing nations, Lance. You and I have discussed this even in private. They have issues with developing nations. They don't understand the totality of what a de developing nation is. I am not talking about no matter where you go on planet Earth. Now, if you are cyborg and can live outside of the oxygen of the Earth and you go into another planet, I'm not talking to you. You good. You great. Now, for those of us that must live with the oxygen parameters within planet Earth, okay, <laughs> we know wherever there's people, there's problems. Wherever there's people with tongues in their mouths, there's liars, thieves. So I don't care where you go, your utopia that you claim you seek, as long as there are people, there's going to be ills. But find which of those works best for you and yours. And then stop denigrating and telling your children to vote for these politicians that you know ain't going to do a damn thing for you and your family because they have it all alone. But the optics, the optics look good for you. So now I have given you some solutions. Now, which one are you going to take? Which one are you going to decide that works best in the framework in which you saying you reside, live, move about. Okay. <laughs> you know, now, let's, let's, you to... let's hear what your solutions are. I'm just saying, because people say all the time that you don't offer solutions. No, 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 I do. The problem is, is that you folks listen and you don't listen with a tuned ear. You don't listen with a tuned ear and you want someone to come in here and just mm -hmm. give you the keys to paradise with no, um, like it's just gonna be all this great and grander. As long as you have humans, that's going to be issues. That is, we are not a monolith. If we all thought and did the same thing, do you know how robotic we would be? Is that how you wanna live? Is that how you wanna mm -hmm. live? No way. No so, Liz, those are my solutions for folks. Because as I say, they love to say that you have discussions and people I tell agree. I I agree. I'm not agreeing. I'm not agreeing just to say, well, or, or stroke you or whatever. Because if I had something to say against what you said, but you gave options and that's a start. Even if someone wanted to take what you offered and alter it or uh, NIGG rig it, and make it something work better for them to customize it. It's a start. But like when it comes time to getting out of this um, this battle, many don't want to get out of it. Many want to posture. Many want to project. Many want to have meeting after meeting, discussion after discussion that goes nowhere. Most of us are not really about action. And when I personally realize that there might be those around me who may not be about action, I have to take action myself. In a perfect world, we'd all get together and have this come by our moment with all of the money that we have in America spending and making everybody else rich, with all of these things that we want to have to wear our wealth on our sleeves, what we have lint in our pocket, we can't sacrifice for the greater good. When they built the wall of China, right? They knew that they would not be alive when that wall was finished, but it didn't lessen their conviction to build that wall. They many won't. of the things, exactly, many have died there, just like they have died on bridges and died building skyscrapers, but they knew 
that they wouldn't be around, but they realized that they were a crucial part of a bigger vision. We don't have that. We can talk that, but we don't have that. So me being up on 60 years old and seeing things not change, but seeing things regress, I'm all about the cause, but you know what? Some people got to go. I am not going to sit here personally and babysit the ones who posture and talk and can't let go of the ego. Because I'm going to say it again until I turn purple in the face. Everybody wants to be that second hand, the, the hour hand and the minute hand on that very expensive watch, seen all the time and being the one to bring truth. But nobody wants to be those little tiny microscopic gears that move those hands and make it keep the perfect time that that faceplate of a watch gets credit for, but nobody sees what's going on behind the scenes. We have yes. to be able to let our egos go. We have to be able to think beyond our lifespan. But many of us seek this attention and want to be the one and want to be the speaker of truth. And yes, I can do better than I can speak, but I don't give a damn about that. Before YouTube finally bans me, I might just walk away and leave it and do what I really want to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, this, no, this, I, this thing is getting, I, even though I, this thing is, I'm going to do it because folks like the flavor, even though they reduce my numbers and stuff, I'm going to keep on doing it. But I, my, my, my essence and my end and what made me is not this. This is not the first time I got attention in my life, so I'm not addicted to it. Like they have made this to be a narcotic for us. They have hijacked the movement. We look back and we see Malcolm X, but we got Photoshop now, and we can pose ourselves and we can manufacture leaders and revolutionaries like that one mayor, um, that this other, the fat chick up in, um, what's her name? Um, Geechee or whatever her name is. And she got on me because I did a, a, a video questioning his validity because he was some rapper who was supposed to get this award and he was this and this and that. And now she finds out he's a fraud. What's she going to say? See, we have so many people who are infiltrators, and it doesn't take much. Look, Malcolm X didn't have social media, but what he said got out there. We can sit here with a cam, a bunch of computers and equipment, and project ourselves out to be this, and go home and lay down and live exactly the opposite. And I'm going to say it. We have talked personally, and you know what I have dealt with in the last few months as far as frauds are concerned. It's so easy to be that. But Malcolm X died broke. Malcolm X wasn't watching his YouTube numbers to see how much he's going to get paid this month. He did what he did because it was the right thing to do, and he had conviction and commitment where others didn't. And even after he died, where were those who took care of his wife and his kids? Little bastards. Do you think it's going to be anything different now? Because people... In social media, people turn on you on a dime when you don't give them the attention they want, when they can't finagle up and get something out of you, when you overdose them. So this is why I stay wrong. And like you said, I got to really know you before I F's with you. I used to open the floodgates, come on in and realize these are frauds. Who, 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 this is just another fashion statement. Before they wear the corporate outfit, they, they went now to be the whole temp kings and queens and all that bull. And you're not about it. You can't even sacrifice and support someone who, I'm not talking about me. You ain't going to give me no money. I'm good. If you want to help out, fire. I'm not out here for money. I'm not saying I got money. But I'm at peace with myself because. I'm not out here for anything else except to do what I do. And it's an honor, Sister Elizabeth, that you're here on this channel. When you want to come, you can come on here. Because if you knew something about me that wasn't right, you wouldn't be here. And if you find out something about me that's right, I know you ain't going to be here. So it's an honor to have you here. And anytime you snap your finger, I'm there for you, no questions asked. Because there's too many people that hide behind keyboards and have their hidden agendas and secret motivations. I don't do drama here. I'd rather not do shows at all and go do my artwork and my writing and all the other things that I really love doing. That, that, that brought me here. LanceGirl.com. Check out the artwork. Go ahead, sister.
so I, I wanted to clarify before we conclude here. Um, one of your viewers here, a gentleman, his name is, um, let me go back, Day, uh, Day O Nature. Mm -hmm. I am not, no, I don't believe in no voting system. I don't vote. Whether locally or nationally, I'm not voting. That ain't my testimony. That ain't. Not that is my testimony. What I'm saying is, because the black folks don't continue to vote. What I'm, the option I'm giving you is, is to write someone in. I don't come out to vote. The vote is not going to work in your, it has never worked in your favor. Just write somebody in. Write in your cousin Pookie. Write him in. Don't be voting for these people. They have an agenda that's outside of yours. But the optics make it look like it's all for you. You see that? That's how you got in Joe Hyden and Kama Sutra. Because you folk like identity politics. <laughs> and then he tells you that you ain't black if you don't vote for him. Like, we don't know about all, you've been in politics almost half a century and have never done anything for black folks but all of them, specifically black folks, not minorities. Stop using that word. Black folk. But y'all still voted for it. So I'm telling you, do something different. That's what I'm saying. Try something different. All you have to do is try. You know, I find it funny because I know that the book of you all in, in, in this chat are parents. I know you are. You all will tell your children to try something different, but you won't even take your own advice. That's the hypocrisy I'm talking about. That's what that's the hypocrisy I talk about. Is that you try to enact stuff on your children, but you won't accept your own advice. That's what I'm talking about. So no, I am not with the voting scheme, because that's what it's, it is. It is a scheme. <laughs> like a Ponzi scheme. That is a scheme. <laughs> so no, I am not, I'm not on that. What I'm saying to you is. If you're gonna go on to the polls, write somebody in. Write in Free Call Lee. Write that in. Free Call Lee from To Kill a Mockingbird. Free Call Lee. <laughs> See how they like that. Know your worth, know your power. And the same thing with these black owned businesses. You all are not coming. I, I recognize that everybody, and as I said, I know that, that all, everybody's not coming. However, you should be having a rotation of five black owned businesses. If you see something and, 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 and you, you research and say, okay, well, I can't find it in the black owned, then you go elsewhere. But you need to be supporting the people that look like you, but you all won't accept it. All y'all want to do is go and buy all this high end stuff. And, and, and truth be told, I, in, in ultimate transparency, yes, I have some nice high end things that have been gifted to me. You hear that word? Now, at the same time, what you need to be doing is to supporting the people that look like you. Now, if they scammers, leave, 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 leave their arse alone. Leave them alone. Cut them off. Because we don't need continues, ca continued cancers in our community. That is the right. problem with, with a lot of us in Black America, is that we continue to perpetuate scammers and folks who are not for the good of us at the pearl of our own especially children you know for i don't want to we'll talk that, that's another time but those items that i said just try something different and if you are coming to the continent start getting your mental health on your mental health there because y'all coming with some junk especially you non-travelers you folk coming with a whole bunch of mess and that mess needs to stay in America with the people that help you conjure up the mess. The 25 20s. Leave it there. Lance, I thank you for having me on. It has been real. I know it has been a while since I've been <laughs> on. I appreciate you, brother. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll be back. I'll be back. I, I want everybody to go to Elizabeth, Elizabeth's channel and subscribe if you want more of this. This has been sweet. But if you want more, you see right now we're like that Chinese dude in the mall with that piece of sesame chicken. But we gave you two hours of Elizabeth. If you want the whole meal, you need to go over to her channel and click that button because she's doing so many phenomenal things. I know I got to have it. 
You know what I mean? I can't just get that little taste in my mouth and that's it. I got to go back and sit down in the restaurant every day. And she needs to have her stuff shared. Look, we have a sister here who's thinking with a clear mind, who's naturally beautiful, who was kicked for the time in the behind. She said something about a number. And I'm like, no, you better get 20 years off of that. You know what I mean? So full of fire, so full of truth. You're a throwback. We need more like you. It ain't about the booty, physically, physical booty. It's not about all that, but you have the natural beauty because we've met face to face and hung out as we will very soon. But it's not about what's on your head as far as a hairstyle, which your hairstyle is beautiful, but it's what's inside of your head and what comes out of your mouth. Your rare sister, we had more like you back in the day. I have a few years on you, but I can remember as a little child that we had our strong, truly strong black women who are not reactionary or emotional, but were strong in their conviction to keep the whole together. I ain't talking about no whole down there. I'm talking about the W-H-O-L-E, the whole family unit, the whole community, the whole black mind as it's attacked. And they've been attacking it, but all kind of ways. They're not ambushing us, just obvious. It's stuff behind us in the school, in the entertainment, in the GMO food, and how they project this swirl and make us not want to be with the one we're with. Porno popping up. There's always some white woman on there with a black man. We got to reject this stuff. We have a sister who's giving it to you raw and real. And I don't care if the medicine that she brings doesn't taste good. It's because if it doesn't taste good, that means we're jacked up. The more we're healed, the more the medicine that she gives tastes good. You see? It's just like when you take certain herbs, if your stomach is messed up, you're going to be running to that bathroom a whole lot. But if you are clean in your body, you take those same powerful herbs to purge you, it doesn't do anything to you. So if you're butthurt off of anything that she said, that means you need some healing. And you need to rethink and revamp your plan on how you've been living. And yes, we're not saying everybody has to come and look, live in the motherland. There's a lot of jacked upness out here with those that are here and, but we have a better shot here. And we're thinking a certain way. We're the pioneers. We all do it different ways. But no matter where we are, we have to understand we have to think on a global level. We're citizens of the planet. We're not just relegated to a little place called America where they say we're 13% of the population. No, 13%. We're global citizens and we're the dominant force on the planet. And that's why they want to keep our minds thinking we're minorities. Imagine, they're 9% of the population. And we go to another country and say, oh, we're minorities. You mean you're that gullible to let somebody lie to you that's never been in your corner? But sister, thank you so much for bringing the truth as always. Um, like I said, anytime you, anything you utter out of your mouth has such a powerful effect and I can't wait to hang out with you and produce more content and, and share some things and elevate you because you deserve it. And I just don't understand your numbers should be through the roof. So everybody has a responsibility to go to Elizabeth's YouTube channel and click it and share it and put it on your social media and put it on your social media every day. Even if you don't have time enough to watch it, you click, click. Quick, quick, you all do it for Tyler Perry. I'm going to shut up after this. Back in the day before people knew who Tyler Perry was when he did the Chitlin circuit, they didn't know him then. When he got to Hollywood, most of us saw him. And they felt that his stuff was so good, but you know, his stuff is laced with poison too. I'm just using this as an example. When his next movie came out, they were so intoxicated with it, they said, oh, you know, the next Tyler Perry movie coming out on Friday. What? I'm going. They didn't ask. Because it was so hooked, but it wasn't good stuff in those movies, right? It was sweet poison. Now you have little bitty here. Don't even question what she's talking about. When you see her stuff, do like you do with Tyler Perry and say, oh, I'm going to go to Lizzie Bitty. Share it. Don't even have to look at it and say it's good stuff. We need to support our system. And she's not going to ask, but throw, throw some stuff her way so she can continue to do the good work that she does. Treat to a cup of coffee or a meal or a damn car, whatever it is. She put her neck out here for, and she's, and yo, I've told you behind closed doors and in public, you are very much an inspiration to me. You, you, you inspire me, your energy. You even got on my ass one time when I was a minute late. 
But I wasn't going anywhere. You should listen. I listen. <laughs> I said, ah, you're going to hear me. I'm right here. Because when you say jump, I jump. Many of us do it for the white man. Many of us do it for the white woman. Why can't, if, if this, this lady asks you to do something, she's not being condescending on you. She sees something that you don't see. She's in the trenches with us. She ain't going to date you. I broke my girl. I can't throw so low. She's putting up a fist. Come on, skirt. Let's get in these trenches and let's kick some ass righteously. Because that's what I do in my own way. So don't let her fineness and beauty and prettiness fool you. She's a warrior for us. I'm shutting up. I know you got to go. I'll leave you with the final word. Final word is I'll see you at home. I'll be waiting, my sister. Much love to you. Much love. Yeah.